Blessings and welcome forward to Reasonings Right Here at Your Life on Sila Media. I'm your host, the Great Owl, in the presence of my co-host, Brother Raman Singh. Perfect, Perfect love. Perfect, Perfect love. love. So today is um, Ash Wednesday, and usually, Brother Singh, we are by the church, right? And so, but today the church is like they got um, you know Ash Wednesday services, so we're by the river, and so we're by the river, and you know we, we met an interesting um, group of young people. That's good vibrations. So I wanna send shout out to Lauren and Selena, right? Or Sila and our friends, yeah, just um, in the background. So if you see them, that's them in the background. So yeah, we are in our community, well, my community. So um, we are continuing um, the series that we've been doing on the principles of love are the attributes of love and um, so far we were looking at some of the, the negative um, um, truths about love what love is not and then uh, we started on the positive like what love is and you know our, our return to the positive truths of love is that love rejoices with the truth and so now we move forward to um, love bears all all right and so the first thing when I heard that comes to mind is that love covers a multitude of sins and so because Love covers a multitude of sin. I thought to myself, let's bring a slight definition to the understanding of what love is as it's been given to us, right? So I'm just going to look at it in a simple sense. So first, there is the filial love, right? What some people call the platonic love, which is a love that is seemingly amongst um, friends or siblings, you know? A love born out of the innocence of one's environment and the proximity and familiarity, filial, you know, of your environment. So young children into adulthood. So you have that love for your, your mates, your friends, your, your, your siblings. And so then after filial love, there is eros love, right? And so this love is a love of passion that more involves intimate love between you know, the opposite sex, right? And so you know, this, this um, eros love, love of passion, comes after the filial love. And then we've got um, agape love, right? And these are the Greek terminologies. And agape means the unconditional love, right? A love that supersedes anything that is filial, which is based upon familiarity, right? And a love which is um, eros, which is based upon, again, intimacy and passion, right? But this love, which is the agape love, is the unconditional love. And Christ describes this particular love as a love for the very existence, the very breath, for the very gift of the life that we have. That means all things included in the life are a part of this love. So, I thought I thought I start out this video with looking clearly at the fact that we have stopped or reduced some of the intensity of our love vibration. So the essence of eros or passionate love is becoming more materialistic and self self-centered and self-orienting. The, the the filial love of friendship and innocence is becoming about favoritism, right? And approval. And so because of that dumbing down, reducing of the essence and intensity of love, then agape love, which is the one where faith is born in, hallelujah. Agape love is where faith is born, is where Yeshua is, where, where the unconditional is, the all-loving is. It's lacking because that filial love is supposed to grow into the intimacy of Eros and continue on, as I was saying before, when we were off camera, into unconditional. So you, you preserve the environment in which you live, you do not pollute it, now willfully destroy it by ignorance, right? Or also destroy the animals in the environment, right? right? Or destroy the human beings in the environment, right? So the, 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 there's a construction of understanding that all of that consideration is equally as important as the Eros love and as the Platonic filial, filial love. All is encompassing in the greatest essence of Agape love. Love bears all. Brother Singh. Yes, I love bears all things, you know. So, in terms of bearing, you know, you know, imagine like what, what comes to my mind, you know. It's like, no matter the struggle, no matter the conflict, no matter the situation, mm -hmm. You will be strong to it, you know. It's like you are you are the strong one within any situation. So you know you you know make it break you down. Mm. You see me? So you bear it up, and you know fall down and make emotions take over, and you end up do the wrong thing and say the wrong thing. You bear it with love, you know. 
if something well hurt you for real and anger will come, you, you go and bear it, you know? You hold it. You be the strong one and bear it up, man. It is a strength of character. Character building. Because it's not that a, such an individual is fearless, it's just that in spite of fear, such an individual persists. Yeah? People look at you for inspiration then, right? In a sense of spark something which they already have present in themselves so that that personality or character that you describe you know it's, it's a really a strong person a person that love has done a good working right as I was alluding to the cover in the multitude I've seen is that the forgiving nature within a loving person once a person becomes more loving and applying the principle of love you know being patient being kind being respectful being not easily irritated, you understand me? Not rejoicing at wrongdoing, right? And rejoicing the truth. If a person is doing all these things, yeah, then love becomes transformative, magnetic, yeah, and people are drawn in to that loving vibration. It's so the essence of inspiration is in such a person, right? Because we don't like the people who draw our energies, no. We don't like the people who make us happy. Yes, but yet still, those who have enough light in, 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 in them, you know, so we have to bear them up. True. Trying to light into the ignorance of their situations and let them see another side to the equation. Well said. Yes, sir. You know, I saw if you move the mountain with the feet, tell the mountain to go over there. You see me? Mm -hmm. Can you bear it up? You're strong enough to move the mountain mm -hmm. through faith. Yes. And the most I can remember say the faith of, a, of a, like a mustard seed, you know? So just a slight little faith of no, like without doubt. Yes. Without yeah. doubt. Knowing that so the most I will come true. Yes. If you have that little faith, you will bear up that mountain. Yes. And tell it to go over there, sir. Throw it in the sea. You see me? Okay, now I can just tell the mountain to move, you know. You can tell it wait for God. Yes. <laughs> you see me? Because even so, what day we are realizing we are conquerors in Christ. Yes. We not just fight battle. Yes. We not just win wars. Yes. We go over there you now and go conquer. Yes. You see me? Mm -hmm. We not just defend ourselves and you know? We expand. Yes, I when you are dealing with Christ. You have to be a conqueror, you know, and bear up all things, you see me? Conquer all our emotions, all our sins, all of the secrets, you know? Make truth come true, make light shine true, you see me? Absolutely. And conquer the devil, you see me? We not just have to defend ourselves against the devil. Yes. We are going over to conquer him. Yes. You see me? So we're him never return. Absolutely. We are seizing territory. Yes, sir. And expanding the kingdom of light. If darkness persists, then all of us would, would disappear. Right? So righteousness and the light of truth has to persist. And if love isn't present, that beacon of truth won't shine. Because when love isn't present, then there's too much judgment. And with, with too much judgment, there won't be any decisiveness. As you keep speaking about the decisive character and decisive characteristics, of the loving nature that bears all things. You would have to literally have a strength of purpose and girding up yourself with the word of truth, applying the principles before love would become active. And if love is now active, then you can go out and expand the kingdom. Because you know where you go is light, that there is increase, there is growth, there is development. There's not destruction. And also, the word that comes unto you, right, that gives you that strength of inspiration, the change behavior, it carries the spirit of the logos of the divine I am. And when that activates in your consciousness because you are willing to become vulnerable and allow yourself to open up to it, then love begins to, because principles and truth and trust, and then love begins to grow in you. Then you can go out and advance the kingdom. Then you can go out and seize territory, yeah, to increase and improve the life and the quality of life of those in there. 
and because our weapons of warfare are not carnal, you don't have to take militarization or ammunition or munitions of war to go and then subdue territory because the subjugation of this territory is the annihilation and the removal of shame, ego, disrespect, dishonor, lies, deceit, secrecy, and all manner of things that distort the truth. So this is the advancement of the kingdom that don't need to have, you know, our frontline lieutenants and majors and, um, you know, knight regents aren't, um, and knights aren't armed with military armament but are armed with the spiritual armament that is armed with the truth of the Most High. And this is where the strength of character comes from. Because you have enough compassion, enough overstanding, enough inner standing to see the divergence in people's conditions and situations. To know that beyond your location, their ethnicity, their culture, a word of truth can still be offered across the divide. And this is very, very important because this is the essence of love bearing all things, covering the multitude of sin. You can see the weakness in others. You can see the insecurities in others, but you don't exploit them. You cover them. That's what is the essence of what love is. You cover these sins, right? So when you see a person yeah, that their, their car is left open, right? In a vulnerable moment, yeah? You, 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 you alert them to it. Yeah, you check and see if the car is still in, the keys are still in the ignition, right? You notice that their property is, is unbeknownst to them, exposed, right? Yeah. You call their attention to it, right? You, 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 you adhere to a principle of value and respect so truth can become part of your life so that the value of life, when you yourself are exposed, someone is there to bear you up, right? Because this is a, it is what we recall, the, the, what we're talking about, the song is so love is contagious, the nature of, of love being magnetic. Because if you can strike that chord and that frequency, then you can resonate to others who, who likewise can apply the, the principles because they are now engaging with the frequency. Right? And so now when I see the multitude of sin that we are in, and the word of the Amashia is to remind us to, to show each other better examples inform each other of the truth show each other a path to understanding share the path of understanding share the path you know of long suffering so we have a strength that i can lean on you and you can lean on me our families can lean on each other and if we can build a community like that imagine a nation that is born from such a principle so then we know that anywhere we are in our nation states <laughs> If that principle is applied, everyone is safe. No one needs to go anywhere and feel afraid, ashamed, disquieted, discomforted, out of sync or out of sort. Because it wouldn't be about commonality of ethnicity that would make you feel at peace. It would be a commonality of a loving outcome, application, environment, principle, love bearing all things. Brother Sim. As you say, help bear up each other, you know? Because many times people need help. People need your attention, your good advice, your strength. And we need to go, go help, you know? Bear our next one load, you know? And bear up your own load. Bears all things. Mm -hmm. All things, you know, some things. Yes. <laughs> Love bears all things. You see me? So no matter which situation, no matter the load, I go bear it. You see me? See him with all something there where you name Job. Mm -hmm. You know? Many things happen to Job, you know. Lose him family, lose him. him Cattle, you know, in livestock basically. Lose almost everything but in life. Yes. And in bear it same way and have faith in the most high. Absolutely. And I saw him go through and most high bless him with even better things and double yes. the amount. Yes. You see me? 
So when situations come, just bear with me. Don't be thing. lamenting. Don't be in a state of indignation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see me? Resentment. You know? Just know so you bear it. Most I fight your battles. Absolutely, dear. You see me? Mosai is always by our side. Mosai a cover and cover we on them wing. You know, for sure we say him love we are our father. He know everything what we need. Before we ask. Even before we ask. You know? So nobody thinks that you wanna go through the struggle. Mosai they right next to you. I know you wanna bear the load. Most I bear the load with you. You see me? True love. Absolutely. Because the love come, the power, the most I come through love, you know. Yes. And that's how true power come from, you know. Yes. And righteousness. And you bear it with the most I. You're not alone. Uh. Most I in the fire with you. Hey. No matter what you go through, if they're going to burn you up in a furnace. Yes. The Mosa is right there next to us. Bear in the Lord with us, in the fire with us. And we don't have to feel no fire. Yes. Fire of the faith in him. Absolutely. You don't have to feel no load. You could have if bring in ten more. You yes. know? Bring the fire even hotter. The time to take on his yoke because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. True. Because this one enlightened the soul and enlivened the spirit. And, and that's what happens when love is bearing hard. Because once you're living on principle, acting from the Godly principle, the God-like self becomes apparent and the kingdom of God is within. So when we start enter within the kingdom of God, compassion, truth and understanding and love, being born in this understanding now, it will give us the strength to be able to understand the pain and the suffering of others, as in understanding our own pain as well. So because of that, feeling, knowing and being able to now relate to another, it is now easier to communicate and commune. So that's why we have the essence of communion, which is the, in etymology one of the base rooting of community, communication, is in the commune. And the commune is the gathering of the souls in union, right? And so we have a community based orientation as a living being because we are part of the living cosmos. And so we are not separated. So, bearing another's shame, another's pain, comes with the understanding that love is vast enough to allow such strength. It is not limited by your experience, your geographic location, your ethnicity, or your socio-political, or your class. It's not limited. Love is odorless, colorless, genderless, and flawless. It is principle. And if you can apply principle, you can have the results of principle. And Brother Singh, I know that the average human being, if not most of all human beings, want harmonious experiences. It's just the approach to the harmony. Many have been taught to approach it through the prevailing consciousness and ideology, which is selfishness, right? Which is to care only for yourself and not want to bear the burdens, the interests, or any of the shames of your fellow human. You don't want to cover that because their individualistic outlook on life says, I am the one that feels my pain when I hurt. <laughs> I'm the one that feels my hunger when I'm hungry. So they have a limited view of what true life is or what true love is, but especially what life is because they have disassociated themselves from the connection that binds us all. So the selfish mindset loves to say me, 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 right? While the loving mindset says we, we, we. It's us, 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 all of us included, right? Color, class, and creed is removed because principle again, odorless, colorless, genderless, and flawless. It cannot be held to an ethnicity or it cannot be captive and captioned in a specific belief system because all of us have access to the loving principle. And so to bear the sins, the shame, to be strong for another and not just be for ourselves, 
is the benefit of a godly life. That's what people want, you know. They want a true friend. But how are you going to have a true friend if you are not loving and you're not respectful and you're rude and you're disingenuous and you're uncouth, right? You will not be able to mention, maintain a friendship, let alone be able to maintain a loving relationship because your principles are wacky, you're flaky, right? And so flaky personalities who do not know themselves tend to have problems with other human beings. They go in life with either fear or anger and a tendency towards defense yes, or insulation. They're never open. They're tribal and defensive because those are wrong principles. So how could they inherit love when their principles are not loving? Because they are not true to their own kin, their own friends. They have no good principles, right? They are not true to who they say they love, right? They cannot be genuine, fidel, um, faithful and be in fidelity with the ones they love, right? And they cannot be unconditional to love the environment, to love those they do not know, to love those they do not respect. They cannot be at peace. So how then will anyone with that principle inherit peace on earth? How will they inherit peace on earth with such uncouth behaviors and principles? There's no peace in that. There's contention. There's idiocy in that. There's stupidity in that. There's selfishness. There's violence. There's aggression. There's ego. There's aggrandizing. But where is peace? Where is kindness? Where is forgiveness? Where is understanding? Well, those are in love. Those principles are in love. So if you truly is on the path towards love and understanding, examine those principles and then you'll see how it is you can speak out for your communities, not just your peers now. They will agree with you. Now you can see how you can speak out for your community, which involves those who do not agree with you. Now, how can you speak for your nation state, so-called nation state? How can you then speak now for your region when you are limited to your own ethnicity, your own tribal identity, that you have no principles to respect those same qualities in other ethnicities? So these are the principles that have to be present for love to bear up all things. Love covers a multitude of sin because we can see the weakness and we can overstand the weakness. So we can act to inform individuals how to cover those weaknesses, how to mitigate, how to remove, reduce, and obliterate those weaknesses, and in turn, obliterate them in ourselves. Brother Singh. I want to share a situation with you, you know? Me and my uncle again. <laughs> so you remember my uncle um, always uh, fight me, and a difficult uncle. You know, always trying to get me upset. Yes. You know that recently, my uncle came to me, you know, because after him trying to get me so upset all this time, and well, he's not trying to get me upset, you know, but <laughs> yeah. his actions make me get upset so much, you know? Contrary actions. I said, John, you know, all I could do is bear it mm -hmm. and pray. Pray to the most high. Pray for him. You know? A full prayer towards him. To help him. To become a better person. You know? Me not no prayer of resentment. No prayer of nothing against him. Because I just know say how people are going through things. They stay a certain way. They have certain personalities. Bad habits. Pray for him. Recently, him come and say, him apologize to me. Wow. Yeah. And say, he don't know why he was treating me so bad. Mm -hmm. As an uncle, he should be better, you know? <laughs> Jado, wow. the man apologized. Wow. Wow. So, bearing that for so long, yes. bearing him and him antics so long, <laughs> yeah. the man come, can come back from foreign, can work and travel. Yes. But it look like him got through some experience. Yes. Most of your work. Touch him out. Yeah. Yes. Something go on. The man just Fire's come working. with peace, yes. love, helpfulness. Him now come with no fighting again. Yes. No, no getting me upset or trying to get me upset, you know. I just peace. 
peace and love. Man. So I say most of your work, you know? Absolutely. Just go and bear your situation. Absolutely. And and think the right thing and pray the right thing. You know, because you can bear it and you dead you kiss your teeth and you say, John, you know? <laughs> Irritated, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, bear up, O Lord. Yes. Pray for them. Yes. Pray for others, as you say. You know, think about others. Yes. Pray for, for them being better. Yes. You know, help them to make them be in a better financial situation. Yes. You know, why we not pray for better for people? True. You see me? True. And it actually works. Yes. <laughs> you see me? It does. Because I want the faith as the mustard seed. For no say God I'm gonna do something. We know say God I'm gonna do something. And see him do it. It's just sometimes it's just a good word people want on their behalf. And sometimes the, I think sometimes one of the best times is that you don't have to necessarily know them. But if your spirit is discerning enough again, love gives you that compassion. You feel things. Not just the essence of empathy, but you can feel their pain. And sometimes a good word, when you trust the Holy Spirit, when you trust the Paracletus, when you trust the Ruach HaKodesh, a holy, a holy word will come through you to the soul of an individual to chasten their souls back unto righteousness. It's a thing that is the inner man, but you're not recognizing that. In that moment, the Most High is speaking through you. Because all it took to get that person off the ledge that was about to end it all, was just that word that is born in love. It actually has true compassion. It is not from a judgmental space or from a judgmental, aggressive, angry spirit. Because love cannot thrive in such spirits. It does not thrive in such states of consciousness. It thrives in more peaceful, calmative state. So with offering a calm word unto your fellow humans sometimes, that power of a word of prayer, you go home and you pray for them. You pray with the true fervence of heart on the interest of improving their lives. I don't have to say improving financial situation. I don't have to say improving the, the home situation because you don't have to know what it is that bids a person to suffer in their condition. But the true desire like of your own heart that you want to be in your mansion, your shock, your rock sack, your rock top with peace. So why not have that peace, desire that peace for another human being? You can see her. Sight is not just that you can see, but also that you are seen. So if someone should see you in pain and suffering, why not offer to help? Why not help? Because you can see. And so as I am reminding and I'm imploring the soul, the strength you get from love comes from a commitment. Because it's not like a... And it's good. It's principle. You have to apply them until they become second nature. That means that if you stop applying the principle, believe it or not, you will regress. Tomorrow you will go back to dirty habits like the dog back into its own vomit. You will go back into the same places. You will act the same impetuous, angry, self-centered and selfish nature. It will happen. It's not like... Oh my God, it's not gonna happen because hey, I read this great book. It's called the Bible and I found out some truth. You have to apply the truth. You have to apply the principle to have the work of patience do its perfect work, which is to transform anger, ignorance, arrogance, irritable nature, short-sightedness, short-temperedness into peace, calmness, deference, understanding, love, forgiveness, and increase of abundance of harmonious vibrations. Brother Singh. So, so I see them perfect love man. Perfect love bears all things. Yes. <laughs> yes I well as Brother Singh said, perfect love bears all things. True love. From the filial unto the eros unto the agape. From the platonic to the agape, you know, a sequence of understanding of difference, to respect care and have compassion for another, doing unto others as we have them do unto us. 
love bearing all things. So until next time, this has been The Great Owl. In the presence of my co-host, Brother Ramon Singh, reasonings right here at the True Life. Like, share, subscribe, and advance yourself in the loving, truthful, kind, honest experience in love. Perfect love. Perfect love. A patient love is the one who shows concern. A faithful love is the one who shows concern. You gotta live your life and learn. A faithful love is the one who shows concern. A patient love is the one who shows concern. You got to live your life and learn.